safe return of the space shuttle Discovery this week did more than pump life back into the U.S. space program. It also renewed the public's interest in learning just what's out there. Once again, we're asking that old question, is there life on other planets? One scientist who's always suspected we're not alone is astronomer Carl Sagan. He's written about making contact with life on other planets, and he's taught a whole generation to look up and wonder. In a moment, we'll talk to Carl Sagan, but first, this look at our obsession with exploring the last frontier. Since the beginning of time, man has watched the sky, scanning the universe for other forms of life. We've looked through enormous telescopes, We've listened for messages from the stars. And for fleeting instances, we've been convinced we are not alone. Menacing all mankind and every creature on Earth comes the war of the world. The cosmic search for life out there began in earnest in the 1960s. Like the space race, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence was a well-respected branch of science. We seemed determined to show that man was not alone in the universe. We were eager to prove that creatures from outer space were not the monsters they were cracked up to be. I didn't think I had that much to drink. While the search continues, man's calls for companionship have gone unanswered. And over the years, the curiosity over who may be out there has dwindled. NASA is no longer etching coded messages for aliens on the sides of their space probes. The sinister invaders have been transformed into lovable guys. But given the immensity of our cosmos, a hundred billion stars in our galaxy, a hundred billion galaxies in our universe, the scientists and the curious-minded continue to dream, cling to the belief that man is not alone. Dr. Carl Sagan has devoted a good part of his life to the search for extraterrestrials. He's attending a conference of the planetary societies in Toronto. Dr. Sagan, you've been looking for intelligent life out there for a long time. If there were intelligent life, shouldn't we have crossed paths by now? No, we've hardly begun to look. You uh, have to bear in mind the enormous number of possible worlds going around other stars in the Milky Way galaxy the enormous number of frequencies or channel stations that you must listen to, the variability of the band pass, how wide the frequency range of a given station is. And if you bear all that in mind, you will realize that the few anecdotal searches that have gone on up to now, a few of them in Canada, by the way, uh, are barely scratching the surface of the problem. It would be astounding if we had succeeded by now. We have not. What do you think you're looking for out there? A lot of you would like to shake hands with E.T. They're not interested in microbes. Are you looking for microbes or something more interesting? Microbes will not send us radio messages, so we are not looking for microbes. Uh, whether any intelligent beings evolved on planets of other stars have hands to shake is very much an open question. We have no way to know what intelligent beings, advanced civilizations on planets of other stars would be like. That's the, one of the main reasons we're looking. Help us understand what you're doing. You want to send out our waves. No. Nope. You want to catch their waves. You are sending out our waves. That is, commercial television and state-supported television is the principal source, along with military radar, of human beings advertising that they're here and also where they are. What we're talking about in the radio astronomical community is the opposite. We listen for possible radio signals sent our way on purpose by advanced civilizations, if there are any, on planets of other stars. And all we're doing is listening. Somebody could be beaming out old howdy-doody movies this way for hundreds of years, but if we're not tuned into their band, we wouldn't even get the wave. Hundred percent right. So the present Planetary Society program called uh, META uh, listens at over 8 million channels, 8 million different uh, stations, if you like. But that is only a tiny fraction of the uh, possible frequencies in which broadcasts might be done. So one of the major next steps is to increase from 8 million to something like a billion separate channels. Uh, and what you've said is exactly uh, part of the 
the reason that uh, we'd be amazed if we succeeded uh, by now. Where's the source of life? Where's the likeliest source of life then? If we're talking about intelligent life in the solar system, it's extremely unlikely that uh, there is any advanced civilization except on Earth, because if it was there, we should have discovered it by now. They should have come and visited us, and there's no evidence for such visits. So as for intelligent life in the solar system, I think uh, the Earth is it. What the radio search we're talking about, as I've tried to stress, is to listen for signals from civilizations on planets of other stars, of which there are several hundred billion in the Milky Way galaxy and several hundred billion other galaxies. Dr. Zagan, you're pursuing this for, for what? For reasons of intellectual curiosity, because we've got the technology to uh, pursue our fantasies, our ancient myths, or for another reason? I think it's one of the most fascinating questions that humans have ever asked. Are we the only kind of intelligent life that there is in the universe? Or are there others evolved under different physical circumstances, with different uh, bodies and different ways of thinking with whom we can communicate? It's the ultimate attempt at deprovincialization. And uh, I think it's a very good uh, objective for the human species at this critical moment when we're in this halting and tentative and uh, not fully successful way, trying to bind up all the peoples of the Earth into what we clearly are, one species and one planet. I think the very thought of there being other beings different from all of us can have a very useful, cohering role for the human species. Good of you to talk to us. Thank you. When we return, Margaret Atwood.